Hi guys, um, very quick one today of a job I'm actually doing for a client. Um, I've got to bend some angle iron, inch angle, um, with a bit of a radius on the um, sort of in it, for part of um, a canopy on an old um, timber tractor. And obviously I haven't got a jig, so I'm going to make one. I'm going to start with this, which is um, just an old bit of heavy, I think it's about 40 by 10. I rolled up for another job. I'm going to weld that to the bench and use that to make the jig. Uh, it's about the right sort of radius. Um, I'm going to clamp a bit of heavy bar onto the edge of the uh, bench and pull it round. This is the angle I'm going to use for the actual size of the canopy. It's only ordinary inch by eighth very lightweight stuff. To make the jig I'm going to use this. It's, I've had it kicking about for many many years. I don't know what I bought it for originally. It's about half a length left now. Um, it's a heavy old lump but I think it should do the job perfectly. So we're going to cut some of that off and see if we can pull a jig around with it. Now, first thing I'm going to do, I think, is probably weld this on here far enough up so that I don't get 90. I want just under 90 because it's it's sort of got an angle on the hood on this canopy. So I want to weld that far enough up the bench so I'm not hanging off. So let's cut off this bit of heavy old bar. It might take a little while because the saw blade's a bit blunt. I have to change it. One of those jobs you never get round to. Every time you use it and you feel it's blunt, you think, I must change that, and then you get onto another job and you forget all about it. And I must do it. Although I don't often cut anything this heavy. So it's usually only light stuff I'm using on here. It's lubricated by cutting oil. Alright, so that's that great lump. So I've welded that on the bench. And we're going to give it a go, see if we can pull this heavy old lump round. Unfortunately, I just started to do it and realised that the camera wasn't on. So that's why there's a slight bend in there already, because I, I literally just started and realised that the camera was off, so I put it on, put it back in the fire, so you can see uh, the majority of it. Now you can see even hot, a bit of inch and a quarter is tough to pull round. But nonetheless it's going. It's not quite hot enough, I'm going to pull it around a bit more. Now you don't want to get this, when you're doing something like this, making a jig, you don't want it too hot, too long, too long a, a length along the, the uh, bar, you can see the general idea. Because if you do, if you get it too long, the heat, as you pull it around it comes away further up the, the, the jig. Um, the only way to stop that is to put loads of clamps on. But with this it's not very practical, so it's easier just to get a shorter heat. So start again a little bit more. Doesn't need a lot. Clamp to the bench. Another little clamp just to stop it coming away there. Clamp it tight up there. And then just put it around a little bit more. And so I want under 90, I'm not quite sure what I want under 90, but so I'm just eyeballing it. It's the same as the radius, I don't know what radius I wanted, but this bit of rolled up stuff looked about right. Um, it's, an old, so it's an old timber tractor, had a very tiny little canopy over the top of it, and this bloke's restoring it, and uh, just wants me to make these angle irons to take the sheet for the canopy. I'm just going to clean up the worst of the rubbish scale 
actually on the camera here it doesn't look particularly even that radius but we'll see because I've got to pull one round each way to get a pair so we'll soon find out whether it's right or not. Right, I'll just cut another little bit of um, that inch and a quarter because it just about fits in my anvil so I'm going to use it to stick it in the, in the hardy hole. So I'm just going to flash this on there and you'll see why it's at an angle in a minute. Um, it just makes it'll make life easier. In fact have, now I've done this I thought about it after I'd done it and I, I've done it wrong. I should have put it on the side and stuck it up both ways so it's sticking out top and bottom and then I could just turn the jig over. It would make that would make life even easier. So if I use it again, that's probably what I'll do. I'll knock that bit of bar off and put it on the side. Now you can see why it's at an angle so I can get to it. I've clamped the, the angle iron onto the short end um, and I just wanted it, well, just makes life easier with it being at a slight angle. You have to sort of sometimes think about these things a little bit ahead of time, sort of in advance. Um, now you need half a dozen hands for this. As you pull it, it's going to pucker, which is why you need your hammer. Just hammer it back down. And I'm pushing it around with my hip. Um, with it being a lightweight angle, you only need to heat the top. That's the bit you're puckering up and banging back into itself, because the the outer edge, as it were, that bit I'm just tapping now, is actually thin enough that it'll bend without heating it. And the reason I was tapping that is it's starting to come away, which is a bit like I was saying earlier. If you get things too hot, that's what happens, it comes away. But this is coming away just because it's thin. So I'm just going to clamp it on there, just so as you're pulling it round it doesn't come away. Again, just do a little bit at a time, go slow and steady, because if you go too quick it uh, will pucker up too much or you'll get flats in it as you're pulling it round. I don't know whether you'd be able to do this in the forge. I haven't even dreamt about trying it because I've got the gas. Um, and it's controllable, you can put it where you want it. I dare say at a push, if you hadn't got gas and you were desperate to do this, you probably could do it in the forge, but it would be a bit tricky. This way is much easier. You can see I'm using my hip still just to pull it round. I'm going to hold it tight up against the, the jig with my hip and reheat it all the way along um, and that's probably not necessary but I like to do it, it just sort of takes any any extra tension out that's in there so that you don't get any surprises when you let go, it doesn't spring one way or another and that's about it now for the job I have in mind obviously if I was doing it dozens and dozens of these I would have just sent a template to my local ring rollers and they would have done them spot on but as I only want a pair it's not worth it it's just just easier to make a little jig up and I'll sling that in the corner of the shop and you never know in another 20 years time I might want to make some more as you can see that's not too bad by the time that's all clad with sheet I don't know if he's going to use steel or aluminium that won't look too bad at all so I've just cleaned it up a little bit just the inner edge because the inner edge there does sort of get a bit puckered so I've just run a file over it just to tidy it up and by the time it's clad around here that'll look quite nice you've got some obviously bits of steel joining it to the other piece the other side then you clad it over and that'll look a treat so now I've got to go and make another one to make a pair right so I've now got my pair that jig obviously was fairly the same because I pulled this the other one round the other way and they're pretty much the same as you can see that's where it's been puckered up 
it actually doesn't look too bad and they'll go obviously away from each other I think it's about four foot wide three foot six four foot wide so any little inconsistencies won't matter and then they're clad with the sheet and then fold the edge over just leave sort of three eighths of an inch tap it over the edge with a soft hammer mallet pop rivet around the top and down the sides and Bob's your uncle so there you go that's one of my jobs for the day thanks for watching catch you on the next one